It took me on a really fascinating tour of his light fixtures. Compact fluorescent bulbs, all fluorescent, all the light that we're getting here is from fluorescence, very energy efficient fluorescence. And come this way, I want you to see this. And cool, right? It's cool in here because we have good insulation, double pane windows, good insulation in the attic, energy saving thermostat in there. Again, all compact fluorescent bulbs, lots of recycling under there. Because this could be lead to really This dangerous. is a trash can, right? That is. Yeah. It's, oh, but it's you have not to a solar generator. No, you have to compost it. Oh my God. Yeah. Top sweet, please. You will tell everyone about what I'm enduring here, won't you? Uh, yes, yes, I will. Please. I will. I sort of see what Rochelle is dealing with. Well, you know what's interesting about that segment is that the negative message is within it. Mm -hmm. So, what I actually told people to do, the first thing they should do is get rid of their television. Get rid of your television and you won't get that negative message coming into your house. That's the pollution, actually, but is within the sort of mediascape, right? I mean, these sorts of things like keeping chickens and growing vegetables are very old practices that you know, people all around the world do. It's only in this very uh, refined place, this mediascape that we live in, where it's, it's considered to be unusual. So you cut that off and you're not going to get that message. But how will I watch The Walking Dead? Uh, <laughs> online, online. <laughs> online. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, Desi, what are your thoughts? I mean, what are you doing personally to make your lifestyle a green one? Well, I think the point that people should be thinking about is there are things that you can do as an individual, and we're all on a, on a spectrum, essentially. You know, so I've been working on this for a while now, so I'm gradually making changes to my habits as I learn about them, as I can afford them, as I can adopt new technologies or new ideas, or especially the old ideas. You know, like Eric was talking about, these are things that our grandparents and our great grandparents did, you know, in the 30s, in the 40s. You know, people did these things. We had victory gardens during World War II where people actually participated as a community, as a region, and as a nation together to create these more sustainable, sort of homegrown, DIY. DIY uh, approaches to what you do, you know, because there was a time during the World War II when, you know, there was a lot of scarcity. Everything went towards the war, the war effort. Um, it, all these things are just sort of efficiency and, and commonsensical sort of things to do. The idea that, that now this is something that's a little bit weird or hippier out there, it's bogus. It's total bullshit. Like, people still have to live their lives, and why not do it in a way that's sustainable and financially sustainable? When you can gradually make a habit shift, you know, when you replace an, an incandescent light bulb, go get an LED. You know, most people don't realize that, you know, light bulbs, incandescent light bulbs, waste 90% of the energy in heat. So you're spending money that you don't need to spend on that. Do you think that the government getting involved is a good thing or a bad thing? Because anytime the government does get involved, this is my opinion, I feel like people immediately want to do the opposite. Going back to the light bulbs, for example, light bulbs were invented, you know, Edison in 1900. They did not change substantially over 100 years. It wasn't until the government, Congress and the president together, George Bush, actually said we need to upgrade our light bulbs. We need energy efficiency. It is cheaper to not use the energy than it is to build another billion dollar power plant. So let's require the light bulb managers to innovate and we'll leave the innovation up to them. We'll just set a standard. Same thing in California, energy efficiency standards. The reason people in the rest of the country can buy an energy efficient refrigerator is because of California setting that standard. Do you think that personal responsibility is gonna make that much of a difference? You know, there are these big issues, there's corporations, there's the government, but we as individuals can only have a limited effect on those. So we have to do what we can do. Mm -hmm. And I would rather people focus on those things that they can change. So, and that is at the personal level, but it's also at the neighborhood and the community level. All of us doing something matters. Even if it's turning off a light switch, if it's not getting ridiculous plastic bags or whatever it might be, one small thing a day. I say try something every, every day, even if it's not running the water when you wash your teeth. Great points. And I think that the message to really take away from this segment is you don't have to do anything revolutionary. You don't have to go get solar panels. Uh, if you can't afford the double pane windows in your house, you don't necessarily have to do that either. If you can make the small changes, if you can afford the small changes, you're already doing a significant uh, service to the green movement and I love that.